Chairman Fu, I really want to thank you for, uh, for being here uh, with us. You've been to Yunnan many times, uh, but it's great to, to have you uh, here. We, um, I want to start by asking you uh, about something that we discussed the last time we met in, uh, in Beijing a few mm -hmm. months ago. And you said something that I thought at the time was quite extraordinary. Uh, we were talking about uh, uh, China's approach to the environment and how Xi Jinping was making that an important priority. And uh, you obviously are in touch all the time with industrial leaders uh, in China, especially uh, state-owned enterprises. Uh, and you said, if I remember correctly, that um, you think that the leaders of China's largest companies that are on the Fortune 500 list really understand the importance of the environment, but they don't understand the urgency. They know they have to solve a lot of these problems, but they think they have more time than they actually have. And I wonder if you could expand on that and tell me a little bit about what you meant by that. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you very much, Clay, for the introduction, and uh, we're happy to uh, join you for this uh, Fortune uh, Forum here in Yunnan province. And uh, this is a good op opportunity to, to let the uh, expats from overseas to see what's happening here in China, especially in Yunnan provinces. Yunnan province is not the most developed area in China, but you can see everywhere that the impressions about the environmental issue, prote environmental protection, and the uh, low carbon green uh, development scenarios has been adopted by the government and business and the people here uh, everywhere. This reflects the, the whole efforts made by Chinese people everywhere in, in this country. Uh, as as uh, you, you mentioned that, that uh, last time we, we talked about that uh, still there's uh, some, some concerns, ah. even though that uh, efforts was made great in the past few years, but the, uh, since this is a problem accumulated by many, many years, and they, this will take some time. However, there's uh, one of the areas that uh, I'm quite concerned that uh, the business leaders and the big, the largest business, as middle and small, one of the importance is not just recognition uh, or awareness of the importance, uh -huh. but the awareness of the urgency. Uh -huh. So urgency is real the problem that the business leaders need to uh, focus. And because a lot of things are happening here uh, very fast, but this is, we are not talking about the environmental protection for environment, environmental uh, protection itself. It's really determining our life quality of the people and in the future and the uh, progress of a social society. So without this uh, efforts, and you see that our children or even next de generation will continue to pay the cost for this. And this is not just uh, efforts made in the uh, environmental protection and also related with the energy. The yeah. energy structures, uh, renewable development, and the battery C uh, uh, cars, everything related with this. So I, I believe this will become more and more uh, efforts by the business, especially business leaders. To, to figure it out. Mm -hmm. you, you, you said something that I thought was quite profound then, uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember you saying that the, the problem was that business leaders in China often assume that they've got that you know, these problems took 30 years to accumulate and that they've got 30 years to solve them. And you said that's not true. They've got five to 10 years to really solve them. Is that, why, why is that so? Uh, you know, uh, like Western people <laughs> here in China, people are tr uh, most likely they want to enjoy the better life. Mm. Like, like the uh, President Xi Jinping uh, mentioned that the, that the desire of the people for the better life is the, the party and the government's uh, working efforts. Right. And what the better, better life refer to, not just economic improvement, but there's the, the, the tremendous need on the clean, uh, clean airs and, and the blue skies and also clean water. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of tremendous need uh, and the pressure from the people. So we are working here, we are living here, 
we should be pay more attention to our own generation, our own kids, or grandfather, uh, grand, uh, children. grandchildren. Grandchildren. Mm. In, in our meeting earlier with the uh, party secretary, he said something, he mentioned a, a, a now famous uh, quote that Xi Jinping uh, uh, is, is attributed to Xi Jinping, where he said, uh, what is it? Uh, green mountains and blue water are more valuable than gold and silver. Is that it? Is that how it goes? Yes. This has become common concept by almost every common Chinese huh. in, in China. Huh. But the effort is not that easy, like, <laughs> like we, we, we just uh, use our lips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do, uh, but, I mean, is your sense that, that uh, the government is really serious about this? That this is not just something that people talk about, but it's... I think, generally speaking, yeah. All the government leaders are very serious, yeah. but there is a, some some problem with this. It's not because their attitudes is not there, but because the efforts, uh, the technologies, and the the ways of managing this will still make need to make a big improvement. I see. I see. I'll give you a good a good okay. example. Like, like a CO2 uh, discharge or environmental pollutant discharge, and there's the the management in the government management, they're using the way like uh, they call volume uh, control, total volume control in each area, but this is not enough. Mm. They also need like uh, consumption, energy consumption, they need intensity of energy consumption to measure the whole area, the each of the company. Now they just, so we measure the whole area, like province uh, give those total volume, you should not overpass this. This is not enough. This is good, but not enough. Mm. So they need to make every company the volume, right. the quota, right. and also the the uh, the intent of the company uh, of the energy consumption. Every company need to measure their own discharge and the and the consumption of energy. Yeah. So you've talked a little bit about the social imperative for this. Um, um, we, we just kind of briefly discussed how the government is really getting serious and going to start to lean on companies in a, in a way that we haven't seen previously in China and that Xi Jinping is really committed to doing this. I wonder if we could talk a little bit about the technological imperative because we spoke about this as, as well. And you mentioned that uh, in many cases, particularly in the traditional oil and gas industries, mm -hmm. people are not aware of the new technologies that are becoming available that are changing their business landscape, that if they don't adjust to them, they're gonna, it's not just gonna be a, a question of not doing their social duty, it's gonna be a question of uh, losing money and being put out of business. Well, this is a couple of areas that really uh, uh, misleading. Yeah. For example, the cost right. for cure the environment, yeah. and especially operating your facilities or production uh, uh, equipment. That was wrong. Right. We, we need to spend money to operate our facilities, but this may be one time or a few years, but for the next 10 years, even 20 years, you continue to make big profit. So we, we have our own good experience in the past. We spent a lot on upgrading our facilities and in, in order to reduce the, the burning of the uh, more energy and uh, and reducing the discharge or, uh, of the waters, all the other pollutants. But actually, we are making better uh, progress in our uh, uh, production and the profit. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you consume less and less energy uh, if you upgrade your facilities. I see, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, um, we've, uh, Bill McDonough is here. Uh, Say hi, Bill. Bill, uh, one of the, the, the great uh, original proponents of the circular economy and has really been very active in uh, trying to uh, work with China to refine that concept here. Um, one of the things Bill and a couple of other uh, of our speakers are going to talk about later in the program is the issue of plastics. And plastics is important, obviously, to the oil industry because it takes a lot of oil right now, usually, to make traditional forms of plastic. But as Bill will explain and others, uh, there are other ways you know, that you can take plastic and you can use it to create energy, that you can mm -hmm. create it without. I mean, is the oil industry in China looking at the technologies that affect both our, our, how we produce uh, plastic and consume it and how that will have an impact on their business? I think 
Bill and his company has done great in uh, generating renewables, especially uh, geothermal. I think that will be uh, great to reducing the uh, the uh, carbon, uh, no, uh, uh, the the uh, traditional uh, carbon uh, uh, dioxide. And in in terms of the uh, the chemicals. Yeah. I think this is uh, related in the two areas. One, how we, we are not using that much and, uh, in, in our uh, normal life. Second, we need to make uh, uh, technology, upgrading our uh, uh, technology to make those things are not just a pollutant. They can be dissolved uh -huh. by, uh -huh. by the soil or water. So this is a need a new technology, but there is something on uh, programming here in this country, and there's uh, also related uh, next uh, element is the CO2 yeah. discharge. Uh, or any uh, uh, chemicals related uh, or build a lot of CO2, how we're tracing the CO2, the, the CO2 print recognition by the, not just by manufacturers and also the business related with this, we need to really pay much uh, uh, higher attention to, uh, for, for the CO2 uh, print, uh, footprint uh, wow. and the management. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. we're, gonna, we're gonna talk uh, a lot about, uh, uh, about energy o over the next uh, three days, uh, but um, I, 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 you know, I think, um, Nobo Tanaka, uh, formerly from the International Energy Agency, is here, and he's going to talk about how the U.S. has become sort of independent by its efforts on shale, and that's really changed the geosecurity landscape. Uh, but China, at the same time, is emerging as the leader, the global leader, in renewables. How is that affecting traditional energy producers in, in China that, you know, I mean, Jeff's article details uh, the amazing ways in which electric vehicles and batteries and, and solar power is coming on stream very, very quickly in China. How does that affect the outlook for China's companies? Uh, China has been done a great job to make a, a very big progress in the uh, past few years. However, I believe we can make even bigger progress in the next few years. Uh, uh, because you, you see the, the technology impro uh, I improvement making the cost shut down uh, tremendously. And uh, some of the technologies like solar and uh, even the wind, they can uh, compete with even with the power uh, price generated yeah. with coal. Yeah. So this can make it, this will have a, uh, have a great importance to China, because uh, you talked about the independence energy in time, independence in U.S. and especially we, we look at the uh, geopolitics. Yeah. And this making China a lot of nervous <laughs> for long run. Yeah. So if we have, a, have make this a strategic for China, so 10 years, 15 years, we can make independence on the energy, on the renewable technology. Right. And then this is making a lot of easier for China to, to grow. And they also set up a good example for, for, for other parts of the world. Huh. Mm. I want to ask you uh, one question that I think is on a lot of people's minds, but and then take questions from the audience. Where are our mic wranglers here? Can I see you? I, okay, good. I maybe want to just go to Bill McDonough to have a comment, but let me ask this question and then maybe we can come to, to Bill. Um, so um, I'm just remembering uh, 2017, January, we were also impressed when Xi Jinping went to Davos. No Chinese president had ever made a speech at the World Economic Forum before. He made this amazing speech, and everyone praised him as being a global leader. But one of the things he talked about was sustainability. And he said that uh, the Paris Agreement was a worthwhile, hard-won achievement, and that everybody had, that had signed the Paris uh, Climate Agreement should stick to it. And three days later, the United States swore in President Trump uh, <laughs> as our new president, and one of the very first official acts of President Trump was to withdraw from the climate deal. Um, so my question is this. How does that affect the way China approaches global energy issues? Does it still make sense for China to cooperate? Or in a world where suddenly the leader of the United States is putting America first, is it in China's better interest to put China first? I think uh, 
Chinese government and also President Xi Jinping, they are working for Chinese benefit, uh, Chinese, the interest of Chinese. They are not looking for, for US. So this is what they are committed, is not for others, but this is for the good of Chinese people. So China has been working very hard on this and they will continue to do this, but I think we can do better. We can do even faster. Oh. And it, especially on the CO2, there's a misunderstanding in the market, even in the business. And they thought that uh, perhaps if we can meet our commitment uh, by 2030, the peak will meet, reach the peak, they yeah. think, okay, we can relax. Yeah. But this is not right. Uh. We can do f even further. And then this is not the bad thing. This is first the, the will good to, our, uh, to Chinese people and then to, yeah. the, uh, to the international people. Because, you know, this is, will create a big market for ourselves. Yeah. Don't think this is a, a, just a cause issue. Yeah. This is also generate a lot of profits and other benefits. Yeah, but we got two minutes, less than two minutes. Do you want to make just a quick comment, Bill, uh, on this? We've got a mic right behind you there, I think. I think one of the most astonishing things we've seen in China right now is they're doing something that's very unusual and very special. They're looking at their geothermal resources, working with Iceland and companies there, and they're taking down the chimneys and putting in geothermal for the urban uh, heating district. And this is an astonishing thing because instead of just adding renewables to the mix, they're actually taking down the chimneys. This is a signal to the rest of the world that this is what we need to do. And it's happening here and it's very inspiring for people everywhere. Yeah, great. What do you think about that? Uh, I think uh, uh, this uh, uh, green Arctic has been uh, great has, has been done a great job in China and have joined venture with uh, Sinopec. We have been developing the geothermal uh, for our heating in the couple of cities and making the largest service, uh, uh, the, the heating provided by the thermal in China, especially with the Hunan city, and they are planning for, for the next phase, and the thermal, geothermal for the energy consumption in the area being uh, planned and being recognized by the government there. So lots more uh, in the pipeline for us to watch in terms of new renewable technologies. Uh, that's true, that will be a tremendous uh, industry in the future, both in China and elsewhere in the world. Chairman Fu, I want to thank you. You've introduced a whole series of great topics for us to continue to explore over the next two days. Really appreciate you being here with well, thank us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.